Is it appropriate to open the radio segment drinking coffee, Will? I haven't look had my you. coffee yet this I mean, morning. You look. I haven't had it yet. You I look so cozy, like it's a cold day outside. I know, right? We tape it's these hot. in the we tape these in the mornings, and so I I just it's late. I haven't had my coffee yet. Kaylin, are you a coffee drinker? Uh, I like Starbucks. And that's about it. Do you, you like, like the coffee really at Starbucks? Though? Ramp yeah, up. That's the really all. Yeah. What do you? I, mean, you getting I like the Frappuccinos. If that counts. So no. <laughs> so no. I call that coffee. It's all. Coffee. It has coffee in it. So. Tori, you. Uh, I know you're a coffee girl. Are you? Uh, do you do the black? You do cream and sugar. What do you got going? All of the above. Everything. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the day, but usually, like, I actually got this new Nespresso machine, and <laughs> let me tell you, it's pretty <laughs> awesome. Mm. So it gives you a shot of espresso, and then I got a frother with it, so you can, like, make your own uh, Gotta be foam. Got to be frothy. You can make your own foam or did, hot Did milk. kids drink coffee like this when we were in college, Will? You know. Back uh, in the 1870s? 1870s? When A&M was founded? <laughs> yeah. We're part of the first A&M class. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I did, but I used to drink coffee just black until I was introduced to places like Starbucks. And now there's always cream in there. I'm trying yeah. to keep it sugar free in my old age. They do have sugar free vanilla. I do. That's what cream and sugar. Wants. Cream and sugar is where it's at. I know, but I always not too much though. Because yeah. then it just tastes yeah, like you're like cream drinking has candy. Become, yeah. I literally go to Star, like Starbucks <laughs> we're gonna have and to say to skinny vanilla latte. Like we should I, have a Starbucks yeah. we're gonna have to bleep drink out, options here. We have to bleep out the name of this company since yeah. we're not a sponsor yeah. of the program. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be some fun yeah. editing after this show's done. Uh, <laughs> Wednesday. Slice in coffee conglomerate. Exactly. A, a <laughs> corporation, coffee yeah. corporation. <laughs> Matt and Will with the air, Wednesday edition of Studio 12. Tori Vidalis back for another edition. Uh, Caitlin Alderink in the house today. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's like are you tell, you're telling yourself as you're going through the season, how many hits do I have to get? <laughs> how many plays do I have to make to actually get on the show? Is that kind <laughs> of motivation out there? Bring me on the show. <laughs> I don't know. It's more like how many can I not get? <laughs> Far away kidding. from Caitlin's comfort zone, but you <laughs> know she makes it work. Yeah. Let's see. Well, yeah, there haven't been many that she hasn't get gotten this year. The That's girls, true. the girls, been kicking butt out there. She's so <laughs> consistent. I love it though because she's she flies under the radar, and no one like no one's like Caitlin Aldering. She's blazing up the field and all this stuff, and I'm just sitting over here like every time I'm up to bat, Caitlin gets a hit. Like <laughs> every time she's before me, she gets a hit, and she's on base. So I'm yeah. I'm hey, I'm cool with people not. <laughs> noticing her because she'll just yeah. keep on going well, inconsistent. Kayla, we it, yeah, I know you're not watching because you're playing, but when we're on the air, it's almost like it comes up every game. We don't bring you up much other than you're coming to bat, and next thing you know, we're like, oh, look who's three for three in the game. Yeah. It's Caitlin Aldering. <laughs> that literally happens at, like every game, too. <laughs> Do you like – I mean, is that part of the fun of being in that two-hole? Because it's almost like people are worried about a leadoff hitter. They're worried mm-hmm. about a three-four hole hitter. And I know they pay attention to you, but do you kind of like just kind of hanging out in that little I spot do. there? I love that spot, yeah. actually, yeah. <laughs> well, it was lately it's been Tori in front of me, and so she gets on base almost all the time. <laughs> and then Ashley's behind me, so they have to worry about her knocking one over the fence. So I'm just like, I just got to get on base and, you know, let them do their thing behind me. So. <laughs> it's all good. So That's nice, such a yeah. Caitlin mentality. <laughs> 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 but she does what she's supposed to do. You know, she's at second making all the routine plays. Once in a while, she'll throw a little web gym in there. <laughs> so it's it's nice <laughs> to just have someone that's consistent and is not like, I'm the best, you know, because she's she could be like that because she is very good, you know. Right. But so, Thanks, uh-huh. guys. Very n- well, now she's made an appearance on your segment on yeah. Studio 12. So she's about to <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to check watch the her, ego. Watch her, for watch the rest. her social media numbers. They're going to climb up there. <laughs> keep well, well keep the ego in check in the locker room, too. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Got to deflate the head, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to need some of that. Uh, Tori Vidalis, Caitlin Alderick with us. The Aggies, there's business at hand on Wednesday, but – does the week have a little extra excitement to it, knowing you're starting conference play on Friday with Mississippi State? Everybody kind of anticipates opening day, and then I think everybody kind of anticipates start of conference, start of postseason. There's all these checkpoints, but you guys have kind of hit one now. SEC play is pretty much here. Yeah, I think SEC is obviously a huge checkpoint for us because our conference is ridiculous. Loaded. I'm, uh, yeah, ten, <laughs> ten teams – are ranked in the top 25 like that's that's crazy that it's says called, it all really it's called strength of schedule yeah exactly <laughs> so i think there's going to be a lot of energy and a lot of um excitement going into mississippi state but i think as long as we bring that energy and excitement to sam houston today then we'll be okay you know i think as long as we get it done then we'll be ready to go for this weekend 
Caitlin, I want to ask you about, uh, you know, you guys suffered your first uh, adversity, if you want to call it, of the season. Shut out by Houston on Wednesday at home. Uh, first loss, you know, they're going to happen throughout the course of the season, but I, I could detect some frustration there. And One, were you proud of the way your team responded over the weekend? And two, is it easy to just kind of put one of those away? I know it did break the undefeated streak to start the year, but is it easy to sort of put those behind you and move forward? Yeah, with the Houston game, I mean, we know we're so much better than that. I mean, that doesn't happen to us very often with our powerful offense, but it was great that we could come out right after that and put so many runs up on the board. The first game out, I think we scored like 12 runs, and so it really felt good to kind of hit our stride offensively after being shut out. And But, yeah, we're that talented. Like, we can score that many runs all the time. <laughs> and I think one thing that's lost in the whole discussion of this team, for those that are following the team closely – you're hitting the ball fine. Maybe not as high as you had last year, but still nice average. Pitching has been fantastic this year. They've done a great job. But the Absolutely. one that nobody talks about is defense. Mm -hmm. Guys are – I think you're second in the league in defense. You're one of the best in the country. I think they've made five or six errors all season. Knock on wood, of course. But <laughs> yeah, Kayla, please. talk about the defense. Talk about, you know, the work you guys put in to be the defensive team that you have been so far. Coach always puts such an emphasis on defense, and she always says, you know, you hang your hat on defense. And – you know, it's not always about the crazy plays you make, but it's about just making every play that comes to you, just the easy ones, make it look like coffee and a donut. <laughs> um, and we've been working a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but infield, we've been working on, like, short infield, and she just hits the ball so hard at us, and we're a lot closer than we normally are. Real hard. And it challenges us a lot, and it makes the ones where we're actually in our normal positions, it makes it so much easier. <laughs> But, so, yeah, so we've been a lot more consistent on the field this year. And is that one of the keys that you mentioned, the the practice defensively, hitting the ball harder than you might see in a game? Is one of y'all's keys, and I think coaches like to do this across the board, make practice harder so the game isn't elevated and heightened awareness and stuff like that? I mean, it, it is, is a game – just a game because you guys work so hard at it before you even get to game day. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say part of our game plan is just hitting them as hard as we can just so we can make the other plays easy because people are going to hit the ball at you hard no matter what. But mm -hmm. I think it's more on the side of getting your feet under you and knowing how to move to the ball and knowing how far I'm going to get and how far she's going to get, like which ball is whose and knowing without communicating really who's going to have that ball and just being able to kind of stay comfortable with everybody on the field. Like for me personally, I have to know how everyone's balls move when they come to me at first base. Like Riley's can sometimes tail off to the left or Kristen's can sometimes jump up a little bit. Caitlin's can take me off to the side of the bag. And so it just depends on – who's doing what, and you just got to really know your teammates. So I think that's a big part of it is just, one, getting your feet under you, knowing how to play with your feet, and then also just being comfortable with your teammates. Mm -hmm. Tori Vidalis, Caitlin Aldrink with us here on Studio 12, the Aggie softball team in action uh, tonight in Huntsville at Sam Houston. You can listen to it on Willie 1550. And then they're home. Mississippi State SEC play is here Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the softball complex. Tickets available at the gate and, of course, on uh, 12thman.com. Caitlin, I wanted to ask you about uh, your your family history a little bit. Your dad, was your dad in the core? Is that correct? Yes, Did sir, I hear he that? was. And so, he was. Uh, what, uh, so how proud is he that, uh, I mean, were you going to be an Aggie your entire life, or did that just kind of work <laughs> out that way? I'm sure he's pretty <laughs> He's pretty excited. I'm sure you're wearing the maroon and white. Huh? Yeah, he's. Um, both my parents went to a &M, and so obviously they were pushing for me to go there since I was a tiny little kid. Um, so I've always wanted to go to A&M, and then when the whole softball thing got started and I started thinking, you know, maybe I want to play softball at the next level, there was that possibility that maybe I wouldn't go to A&M, and it was kind of scary for me because I'd grown up wanting to come here, but, um, and then when A&M told me I could come play softball here, it was like, it was a dream come true, and I was, <laughs> I'm sure they all <laughs> cried too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Parents are ecstatic. My whole family comes here. My, I have two older brothers that are here as well right now, so it's just awesome family Everybody tradition. Everybody here right now. Mm -hmm. wow. Both my brothers. Mm -hmm. All right, that's nice. That's real yeah. nice. Did now did uh, when was your first taste of Aggie softball? Did you go to camps? Did you attend games? Because you were you're from the Dallas area, right? From Keller. Yes, sir. So it's not like they're right down the street to come watch a game, but you get down every now and then. What was your first taste? Do you remember? I think I came to a camp before I ever came to a game. I was probably, I don't know, 14 or 15. 
came to a summer Aggie softball camp. <laughs> we were at the same camp, honestly. Probably. With Riley, too? Yeah. That Aww. Was <laughs> All together, Aww. before we knew each other. <laughs> <laughs> we are family. The beginnings. We can see the beginnings. I know. Yeah. It's actually yeah. funny because um, a lot of us knew each other before we even got here, but we, like, knew each other before we knew that we knew each other. Yeah. Does that make sense? So, like, we went to the same camp. Riley and I went to the same camp. Um, Aaron, Kristen, and I, we kind of, like, grew up together. So there's, like, a bunch of, like, little puzzle pieces you can put together how long we've known each other and stuff. So it's cool that we are we all ended up in the same place. Well, yeah. and that matters on the field, too, doesn't it? Oh, it for does. sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's important. There's never any uh, good-natured trash talk between the Houston and Dallas kids, is there? <laughs> no, I don't not think so. You guys keep that clean? That's yeah. Well, I when mean, you know that. You got Laporte and Keller here. <laughs> when you know that I Dallas is way better than Houston. Whoa. Wow. Right? Whoa. Shot. Well, you don't. Wow. But you're, well, she's, she's Fort Worth, though, right? So this guy's from really New Orleans. He doesn't even yeah. have a dog in the fight. He doesn't one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you picked the, right, pick the right one. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, she's Fort Worth, though. I'm right? with so Tori. Yeah. I grew up closer to yeah. Houston, so yeah. I'm with Tori. In your face. No, see, so usually right. when they're hyping so up two Houston, two. I two just, two is gonna break just the gotta tie. throw up the H's and let them talk for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. She didn't know what to say. She was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> I wanted to ask just one quick thing before you guys go about I think it's pe- something people don't always see is how close you guys as athletes are with other teams. You know, mm-hmm. this weekend. And we've seen them uh, quite a bit come to your games. Tony Trocher, Morales, Robert Williams were in the stands at your game on Sunday. You guys, since you got rained out, got to watch them play Kentucky on Saturday. What, how fun is that for you to go support your friends and them to come support you guys in the stands? I think it's awesome. You know, a lot of us, we go through the same schedules every day, practice, class, workouts, all that stuff. But we don't really get to see that side when we're playing. So, I mean, the guys, they would never know, like, what we – what we play like on the field or anything like that. And unless you come watch and it's cool to kind of see each athlete in their own element because we're all obviously talented. That's why we're here, but it's cool to see them in a different light. Cause you don't know them as like the athlete that yeah. everyone else sees them as you see them as a regular person that just is really tall in their <laughs> case. So it's cool to be able to go and see them and uh, them really locked in in uh, a, com- a competitive mode and then for them to see us like that it's kind of funny because th- I don't think that they see that in an everyday life that we're just like so locked in and stuff so I think it's really cool for them to be able to come and get to see our side of our sports world so yeah, and Caitlin is also kind of fun to watch a couple of 6'10 guys try to squeeze <laughs> into some ponchos squeeze on in Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> and and in the Rangers, in. man. Yeah. I, yeah. I think Tony and Robert were actually sitting in the aisle because he was like, my legs are so long, they're going <laughs> to hit someone in the back. <laughs> they worked their way down to the student section by the sugar daddies. Oh, Sunday. I asked them about that. They were yeah. like, well, no one was down there, so we just went to go sit with them. And uh, Robert was telling me how funny the sugar daddies were. And I, <laughs> he was like, they were like saying ball six, ball six, and then they did like ball seven <laughs> and then ball eight. And they were just doing it for like six minutes, I swear. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's what happens when they don't throw a strike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they were amused for sure. That's great. How much do you just love that chant? Because we see it at softball and, and baseball when the other pitcher can't find the strike zone and that's coming at them. You get all that noise, but it's got to be the loneliest place in the world oh. for, for a pitcher. I think it's funny, but I'm also not a pitcher, so I can't. Well, I don't know and how that's on your yeah. side. Yeah, you know, exactly. You don't have to go through right. it. Right, but so. at that point, if I was a pitcher, I'd just pipe it right down the middle, just yeah. like, I need a strike, just throw it right down the yeah. middle. And you know what I always think? If somebody comes and visits me as a pitcher while that's going on, I'm telling them, shut up, get away. Yeah. I just want to get this over with as quick as yeah, possible. Yeah, that's the Let thing. Like, if the coach or the catcher goes yeah. out there, it just makes it even worse. Uh-huh. Yeah. Coach Glasgow was saying that he was like, they're going to make it worse. She's going to throw about four exactly. more balls. Yeah. And I, was I mean, like, I, if I'm ahead. a pitcher, I'm just saying, get away from yeah. me. Let me just pump a strike work as soon as I can. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because they still do it when somebody's oh. out there. It's just so I would run out of breath. I don't think I'd be able to. I, do. I think you just got to pause for one, let the crowd take, and then you get back then you into get back it. <laughs> yeah. exactly. It's a system. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, uh, best of luck tonight in Huntsville and then this weekend, Mississippi State. And again, we'll uh, talk to you throughout the year. Can we get Caitlin back maybe at some point? I mean, if she'll, if what she'll does the come poor back. kid got to do to, to <laughs> earn another? She's probably like, thank God, I've got I this out of the way. <laughs> I don't have to do it the rest of the year. We'll get her back. <laughs> we'll get her back. She has fun. She's I'll laughing bribe her. the whole time. I'll bribe her with some Chick-fil-A or something. Yeah. Oh, very nice.
that would work <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I think a light that's appropriate. Think that is a sponsor. That is a sponsor. I think we'll that's appropriate. It. All right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that coffee conglomerate earlier, well, and we can't mention them again. Exactly. All right, guys. <laughs> but I'm have about fun. to go get a cup. Exactly. <laughs> have fun this weekend. We'll talk to you, uh, Tori, next week. Yep, you will.